Hello everyone, Mr. Happy here, and in this video, I wanted to share with you all my thoughts on patch 3.07. This patch came out on August 25th, 2015, and covers some job changes for Astrologian, Machinist, Dark Knight, Monk, as well as some changes to the favor system and UI. There's some bug fixes, but if we have to go through all those, we're going to be here for way longer than we need to be. So, let's get right into these job changes, which I'm sure the biggest thing people want to know about this. So right off the bat, uh, Dark Knight, the big thing here, the actual change, is Blood Weapon. Now it's a 20% TP cost reduction built into it. This is to fix the issue I've been talking about for like well over a month now, that Dark Knights, when they get to use Blood Weapon, yeah, attack speed is great, but their TP runs out in like two minutes, faster than like every other job in the game. Yes, it requires you to have two minutes of uptime and to be in Blood Weapon, but it's still an annoyance that no other off-tank has to deal with. So nice to see that they're adjusting that. Still some other things I'd adjust about Dark Knight, though, but it's doing all right in Savage, so they probably won't adjust anything else unleash also it seems that there have been people having trouble seeing the aoe's under unleash or at least that's what i'm assuming by they mean enemy attack indicators so they'll be more visible now when you're spamming unleash all right no complaint there uh, if it helps visibility i'm always down for that now for these monk changes forgive me well for this first one forgive me my ignorance if i if this does something else other than what i think it does uh, meditation had its recast time reduced from 1.5 to 1.2 Meditation, as far as I understand, for monks, isn't something you ever use like while you're fighting an enemy. It's not something that you can weave in between the global cooldown, basically, is what I'm trying to say. It eats the global cooldown and just makes the recast time 1. Point now 1. 1.2 seconds. So uh, this will just make stacking it before a fight quicker. It'll make stacking it between phases or when there's when the boss is untargetable or you can't reach them for any reason. So, I mean, th and as far as I'm concerned, that's a good thing. Uh, it just quality of life stuff, I'm assuming. Should make the job a little bit more fluid to play. Forbidden Chakra, also the delay before your next action has been reduced. That's another big thing. Uh, animation delay, horrible. So good to see that they're taking up uh, fixing that with Forbidden Chakra. Tornado Kick at its recast time reduced, so you can burn your Grease Lightning 3 even more often. Really, I don't know if that makes any huge difference if, you, if monks were ever getting the opportunity to use it that often. I don't know if this is going to encourage monks to get rid of Grease Lightning 3, which I sincerely doubt it will, especially with these buffs coming up. So, I guess it's just for fights that have a lot of jumping, like Ravana, maybe? I don't know. Uh, monks, let me know what you think about those first three changes. I mean, like I said, I don't play monk, but these next changes uh, seem a lot more... They make a lot more sense to me. So they're buffing the effect of each Grease Lightning stack. Um, they're making it so it's 1% more for, per stack. So a Grease Lightning 3, it's a total of a 3% damage buff. They're also increasing the duration from 12 to 14 seconds and the PvP duration, which, you know, just because it's kind of hard to maintain Grease Lightning stacks in PvP. So the big thing here, a lot of people have been saying Monk doesn't need this. They don't need any damage buffs. I'd say, yeah, on a personal DPS level, they don't. They they do perfectly fine DPS compared to the other jobs. The only thing is, is that they have no contribution to raid DPS, and that has been a big thing lately. So uh, this is more of a, like, 3% is to kind of mitigate the fact that they don't give any raid DPS, so they're buffing their personal DPS a little bit more. Uh, their Dragon Kick utility is still strong if you don't have a Dark Knight mantra. It's never bad to have, uh, but this should definitely help them be a little bit less scrutinized because they've been unjustly scrutinized just because they've seen, just because people have seen the whole Dark Knight, Warrior, Dragoon Ninja like melee setup. And, you know, monks have just been getting, for no reason at all, just thrown to the side. Monks are good. If you have a monk, He's good. It's good. All right. That makes sense. Also, the duration increase, just always nice. You know, I'm sure no monk will ever complain about having more time to be in Grease Lightning. I don't think that makes limit breaking and keeping Grease Lightning stacks any easier. You know, feel free to correct me, but uh, maybe if you LB2, I guess if you LB3, it's still going to fall off, but LB2 and LB1, yeah, you should definitely be able to maintain Grease Lightning still, I think. I think. Maybe it was 15 seconds it needed to be. Uh, Machinist, quick reload. Uh, this is great. I think this is a great change. They're reducing the recast time. Ignore the whole from 40 to 30 seconds thing. No one cares. Because you get a trait eventually called Quicker Reload, and that trait had its recast time reduced to 15 seconds. So yes, while Quick Reload took a hit to the TP recovering, just because it has such a short cooldown now, instead of 50 TP, it's now 30. Um, this being on a 15 second cooldown is a big deal. One of my biggest problems with Machinist is that if you sit there and don't get procs for like 30 seconds, it's pretty fucking boring to play excuse my language um this should make it more active at least once every 15 seconds you're guaranteed a proc essentially and that's a direct dps increase as well so overall good change solid machinists didn't need any really that much work outside of that so i'm glad that's all they decided to do the big thing for me and i'm sure for a lot of people astro buffs this job has been ridiculed to no end by myself and by others, so it's nice to see them get some love, but let's see if it's the love they really needed. 
So Benefic, Benefic 2, and Helios all had their potencies brought up. Benefic and Benefic 2 now match Cure and Cure 2, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know if Helios is matching Medica there, but they're potency buffs overall. Good. The fun stuff starts from Aspected, Benefic, and on. So Aspected, Benefic, the potency of the regen from Diurnal Sect has been increased from 100 to 140. Wow. That is huge. <laughs> <laughs> that's huge it's 40 potency per aspect of dude i'm doing alexander normal on astrologian today because that's i gotta see how good that is and they didn't forget about nocturnal stance they made it so that when you do aspected benefit remember this only applies to the single target aspected benefit in this case um the amount of damage nullified for, by the barrier from nocturnal sect has been increased to 100 percent from 100% to 130% of the HP restored. So, I mean, that's that's a buff. That's a 30% shielding buff. That's good. To me, though, the 40 potency from Diurnal Sect just looks so much sweeter than that. The, the thing is, Nocturnal is still kind of in a weird spot even after this, I feel. Um, it's definitely the right direction, and it's definitely going to make White Mage Astro combination a little bit more viable, at least if you're going Nocturnal for that combination. I still just feel like you did, making Diurnal even better when Nocturnal was considered so far behind already is like... I don't know. Maybe they should have given Nocturnal more love than this. And I mean, Aspected Helios is no different. Aspected Helios, basically, some of the region ha was uh, is now up front. Uh, they increased the direct healing from 140 to 200, but reduced the regen effect in Diurnal Sect. And the Nocturnal Sect had its potency bumped up by 10, which is a little bit more because of the whole 5% thing. But I mean, 5% of 10 is like nothing. Uh, but I mean, it makes the shield stronger. I mean, there's no denying that. I just... I, I don't know. I still feel like um, I still feel like it's just it's gonna be good. It doesn't even say it's cure potency when not using nocturnal sect. Couldn't they have just said diurnal? It's not like someone's gonna have no sect on when doing aspected Helios in the first place. So um, regardless, still buffs. Regard no matter how you look at it, they're buffs and uh, aspected benefit. Man, I can't get over that. This is crazy. The sinistry buffs are crazy. They're really good. An effect has been added that increases the caster's healing potency by 20% for 20 seconds. So it now has basically Divine Seal built into it. Pretty good. <laughs> I'd say that's pretty good. Now, it did have to take some hits in other places, but it also got buffs in other places as well. Party member under the effect of Sinistry will now get HP whenever any other party member is targeted with a healing spell. So some spells, I think, didn't activate Sinistry's effect. That's the only way... I, I Honestly, I don't pay attention to it that much because I normally just you know, give each one of them an aspected benefit, then Sinistry, then whatever, you know, cast single target heals on other people. So uh, it just makes it, I guess it's a more consistent thing. The tanks will get more of the healing that's done to the rest of the raid. So that's good. I guess we'll now recover HP when any other member is targeted with a healing spell. I wonder if that means like if I did an AOE heal, if all of that healing would still funnel onto the Sinistry target. Um, but it says targeted with. I, you know what, I'm going to try that out. I might make a video about Astro later to really talk about these changes more in depth. Um, but they also reduce the amount of healing given to that target by 10% from 50 to 40%. Who cares? The rest of the buffs are so good. On top of that, it's recast time. It's reduced from 2 minutes to 90 seconds. Like, that's good. Those are all, those are overall, overall great buffs to Sinistry. I couldn't find my words there. So, I'm happy. That's a good thing. Celestial Opposition, I don't think, unless they ever, re they, unless they rework this skill, it's just, it's never going to be a great skill. Recast time is reduced from 2.5 minutes to 2 minutes. Like... Ooh, now I can stun the boss that's immune to stuns more than once every two and a half minutes. Basically, it's just, you know, in, in dungeons, yeah, in four-man dungeons, things will go a little faster. In raids, you'll get that five-second buff to the AoE effects more often. Okay, fantastic. I, I still just don't like this skill, Celestial Opposition. It's good in PvP, that's pretty much it. Uh, disable. Now, this I also really want to talk to some more... Uh, more seasoned Astros about. So the effect has been changed to reduce the potency of all of the target's offensive actions for the duration. Now I'm hoping that means auto attacks as well. Um, since that I, I hopefully hopefully they consider that an action and not an ability or whatnot. So um, but they also reduced how long it lasts from 10 to 6 seconds. All that tells me, and I without even asking another Astro, is that disable was before more effective on a single attack than virus was, which makes sense. You know, 10% of the target's damage is different than 10% of the target's strength or intelligence. Uh, just based on the way they do back end scaling, it should have been it probably was stronger in the first place. Uh, but now it should be easier to use. It only lasts six seconds, but it should be a more meaningful cooldown now it won't get eaten by like the auto attack before the cleave goes out or something like that that's another big thing to its usage uh so collective unconsciousness uh 
Don't know how I feel about this. So it's without a doubt a buff to some degree. It now grants both the regen effect and the 10% damage reduction regardless of sect. It grants both effects. This is a buff to both sects, in no matter which way you look at it. Now Nocturnal has a regen built into it, and now Diurnal has Sacred Soil built into it, basically. That's great. That makes a skill way more useful than it used to be. This auto-attack will now be cancelled upon execution. I guess Astros were able to auto-attack while inside of that. Okay. <laughs> but that's a nerf, guys. Oh no, Astro's gone. Um, but then they also hit the regen potency and the duration of the regen, which makes sense considering you're getting the 10% damage reduction on top of it. But it was so nice getting those giant, giant regen potencies. And didn't they just buff the regen potencies not too long ago? <laughs> so they just undid that and gave it a different effect. Honestly, what I still want to see from Collective Unconsciousness, I would have given up the whole regen plus 10% damage reduction thing for instead, like, if you step into the bubble and then leave the bubble, you keep the effect. Like, that was my, like, thing that I wanted for Collective Unconsciousness. So you could just pop it, give everyone the effect, turn it off, and then go back to doing your thing. That's one of the biggest complaints, is that you can't do anything else while you're in Collective Unconsciousness. It basically acts like a timed sacred soil now if you're using it nocturnal, because you're not going to sit there just, unless you're trying to regen MP, I guess, in the regen version of it. It's a little bit better now, but I don't know. I'm still iffy about it. It's definitely, it's definitely a buff, though. Can't, can't deny that. Uh, and then this. I think this is pretty big. The balance, the bull, and the arrow all had the duration increase from 15 to 30 seconds, regardless of single target or area. That's pretty big. Because 30 seconds is a lot of time to have these effects. Now, don't get me wrong. As a ninja, 30 seconds of the arrow, I look at my TP, I look at my TP bar and go, no, don't give me the arrow. Don't give me the arrow even more than before. But uh, the bull and the balance, that's pretty massive, especially if you're going to combine things like those with uh with their abilities that extend buff duration like that's pretty big including you know you have royal road you have i can't even remember the name of the abilities uh time dilation and you have celestial opposition these effects can be massive and they can be on for super long periods of time now this doesn't however stop me from drawing the spire nine times in a row <laughs> so if that happens these buffs don't affect me at all um, I would have liked to have seen maybe the shuffle change people have been asking for where if you shuffle you can't get the same card again I understand that, yes, if you shuffle a deck, you put the card back in the deck and you shuffled it and there's a chance you could draw the same card. That doesn't make it any more fun. Like, you know what I mean? So, eh, I'll see what my luck looks like today. I'll probably, f I'll either feel really good about these changes by later today or I'll be like, never mind. I just drew the Spire and the Ewer for like 10 minutes straight, so I don't even care. PvP action adjustments, uh, Axe Kick, uh, just uh, being changed to the Grease Lightning effect that was changed before. Purify. Recast being reduced to 90 seconds. Um, well, recast without the trait is down to two minutes. Recast with the trait down to 90 seconds. Summoners, I'm waiting for your tri-disaster now. I got, I got the answer. Then again, so does everyone else. So now killing people is going to be a little bit more interesting. And they also uh, nerfed Battle High and Battle Fever and reduced the damage penalty of Bards and Machinists in PvP when using Goss Barrel or Wanderers Minuet. Good. That's something they should have done because, well, there's no reason to have a damage... Uh, penalty, the range penalty when in those stances, because the whole reason you gave them the penalty in the first place is because they can move and shoot, not just because they were ranged users, but I guess they couldn't reduce it all the way because the cast times aren't as long. Eh, whatever. Regardless, it's a good buff. Um, now this, I don't know how to feel about this. So the effects at the bottom, whatever, those are effects like fishing ventures and fishing and name, ch name item changes, whatever, name change items, whatever. Names of items being changed. The effects on favors have been adjusted. The duration of favors has been reduced from 15 minutes to 5 minutes. Okay. The rate at which concealed gathering points appear has been increased by 300%. So they gave you 300% less time to gather, but gave you 300% more chance to get things gathered. I might actually buy a favor today just to see how often these things spawn. Because this, I mean, I know people who have gotten literally no spawns over the 15 minute time period. I'm curious to see if this ends up being a better or worse thing. I don't know how to feel about it yet, so I won't really express too much. I'll, I'll try and get back to you guys later about that because I don't know if this is... It's probably a good thing, but I have to see for myself first. And the party list has been adjusted as follows. Players can now see the TP bar of all party members. That's right. Goad. Payon. Use it. Please. I don't know why I keep ducking my head forward like this. Regardless, it's a Jersey thing.
Uh, to reduce system load, you can't see your own TP on the party list anymore. Don't worry, that little bar that has HP, MP, TP, you can still see that just fine. Don't panic. Um, and then also the list of party bonuses has been placed on the party members tab under the party in the main menu. So you know how at the top of your party list, it'll say like strength, dex, vitality. It doesn't say that anymore. It says it in your party list. Like if you go to your party list, like by pressing, I guess the default key on the keyboard is O. It takes you to your friends list and all that shit. Um, it'll take you to your party list and it'll be listed there. So just... I don't know. I actually think that's overall good. I don't even think just to reduce system load, it reduces the amount of information on the screen where you, re you should already know that those effects are being given to you if you're in the party. So I think that's fine. I think that it's an overall good compensation. And in overall, I'm, I'm just glad they decided to do that. I think that these are great changes overall said overall like four times let's move on and these things i'm not going to go over they just they fixed a few things they made the rook auto turret attack more often uh goss barrel had a bug where if your mp hit zero it would fall off which i think is pretty funny um they fixed a bug with goss and minuet where if you turn them off and the next skill was in the middle of casting they fixed a bug with summoner they fixed a bug where you could give two food effects to your rook uh to your to your turrets as a uh could, would it only work as turrets? I think it only worked on turrets for our, uh, for Machinist. Uh, fixed an issue with Astrologian, Guild Leaves. There's a lot of things here. We can't go through all of them. But uh, regardless, let me know what you guys thought about patch 3.07, specifically the Astro changes. I also, like I said, want to hear a little bit about the monk things from a more seasoned monk as well. But overall, I'm a fan. I'm going to be playing Astro pretty much all day today uh, in Alexander and doing my expert and whatnot just to try and get a feel for the changes and see how I really feel about them. I may make a follow-up video about that later on. Anyway, I will see you all in the next video. Be on the lookout because it's going to be one that's been highly requested now for a couple of weeks. And I will see you in the next one. Until then, take care.